Hello again, welcome back to Makai Kingdom. Let's jump into it. So in the last episode, what did we do in the last episode? Oh, in the last episode, we farmed some mana. Uh, that was interesting. Uh, let's, let's see, make a wish, yeah. So as you can see, our uh, our Swordmaster here has a whopping 73,321 mana. For this point in the game, that's actually pretty, pretty good. Um, so uh, in this episode, now that we've covered farming mana, um, I'm going to show you a really good use for the mana that you farmed, and that is food dungeons. Uh, so in order to wish for a food dungeon, uh, first you have to have a character who's level 100 or higher. Uh, characters below level 100 cannot wish for food dungeons, so remember that. Um, second, uh, to be able to wish for a food dungeon, your character has to have a food item equipped in their weapon slot. You can see here, my Swordmaster has got this corn equipped. Uh, I did that so I can wish for a food dungeon. Um, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Now you'll notice, uh, I talked about this briefly at the end of last episode. Uh, you'll notice that right here it says that um, this dungeon that we're about to wish for on the left, the enemies are going to be level 258 and there's only going to be one floor. Uh, so the reason the enemies are going to be 258 is because that's twice the level of the character wishing for them. Uh, if you look at the lower right, our Swordmaster here, Craw, her level is 129. 129 times 2 is 258, so easy. Um, and there's only going to be one floor. Uh, so let's go ahead and make the wish. You'll notice uh, it's, if you look at the upper right, it's only a little over 4,000 mana, and we've got 73,000. So our mana farming that we did last episode was very efficient. We're going to be able to wish for a lot of these food dungeons. Uh, so let's wish for our first one right now. And uh, I'm going to save. What I actually want to do is um, very briefly show you what a food dungeon looks like. And then um, after that, oh, I didn't save. After that, I will uh, show you how to get the most out of them. So let's save first. There we go, we saved. Okay. Let's take a look at this food dungeon. So two free dungeons. There we go. All right. So this is a food dungeon. Uh, you'll see that uh, it's only one floor. It's uh, There are no extensions. It's only one small map. And uh, there is a 3x3 three three grid here of nine enemies. It is always like this. Uh, there are always nine of these, uh, what do you call them, scrap metal enemies. These are the first tier of Guardian, uh, uh, the, the job class known as Guardian. And uh, the remarkable thing about the Guardian class is that they are worth more experience, significantly more experience than any other class. The purpose of food dungeons is leveling. That is that is just how it is. Uh, it's a um, there has been content like this in other Nippon Ichi uh, strategy games. There were various stages like this in like Disgaea One, for example. I forget the name of them, but uh, it, it's extremely easy to see. The purpose of these food dungeons is leveling. You spend your mana, you get a stage like this where you can level up really quickly, uh, and that is precisely what this is for. Um, when you do a food dungeon, it's kind of worth uh, checking the bonus list just to see if there's anything on there you absolutely have to have. Um, you'll notice that uh, this map, it's the, it's the only map in this dungeon, and uh, it is only worth 100 points. So you would think that that would make it impossible to get these, uh, these things on the bonus list. Like, you'd think the highest you'd be able to get is the 300, right? Because if, um, if you do an... Uh, an eight-part combo and kill every single one of these, you'll wind up with only uh, 380 points. So you'd, you'd think that's the maximum. You'd be wrong. There are ways to get up to uh, 1,000 points and beyond from, um, from food dungeons. Uh, I won't go into that now. I might do it in a future video. But, um, but yeah, so... Um, Let's take a closer look at these enemies. Uh, you'll notice that they have random um, items in their equipment slots, but nothing in their weapon slot. Uh, these enemies are always unarmed. Uh, that is important um, because uh, 
what you'll often do in food dungeons, at least at, at, at lower levels, uh, you will often be lifting up all of them except one and throwing them out of bounds. And we've covered how that mechanic works. Um, so you, uh, you, you lift up, like, so this level 258 enemy, if we were to lift him up and throw him out of bounds, uh, he wouldn't exist anymore, but his level would be randomly divided up and added to the levels of the remaining enemies here. Uh, so the, um, the uh, implication of that is that um, if you lift all of them except one, uh, the last remaining one will have a level equal to the total of all of these. And because the uh, each of these is uh, twice the level of the character wishing for it, uh, two times nine is 18. So what you'll wind up with is one enemy who is 18 times the level of the character who wished for this dungeon. That's right, 18 times. Um, so that's a very powerful um, method of uh, uh, leveling up is... Uh, getting that one enemy who's 18 times the level of the person who wished for the dungeon. So all you do is you kind of treat this dungeon the same way that we treated Happy Dungeon 1. You go in there and your objective is to inflict gamble um, on at least one of these, uh, throw all of the others out of bounds, and then feed enough food both to your attacker and to the target to achieve that times 50 experience multiplier. And then you just do an attack in order to land that, you know, 50-50 chance of, of, of inflicting the death blow on an enemy with gamble status. Uh, that uh, er, At this point in the game, early on, that is the best use case for food dungeons. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, so let's hop on it. Uh, so before I can actually do that food dungeon, I have to do a tiny bit of legwork. Uh, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of both of those. Yeah, I'm going to have to farm a little bit of food. That doesn't take long. Oh, I got a lot of daggers. Where's my sword? Well, let's start using the Excalibur. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. So facilities, I don't... Yeah, you're not in there anymore. Let's sort items by type. I want to see how much food I have, so let's see. Uh, 40, 20, 20 is 80, uh, plus 100 is 180. I'm going to save that corn for stars. So 180, uh, 210, 240, 250, 260, 270. Yeah, two, we've only got 270, so we need to farm some more food. Uh, so let's do that. And we're going to go to 1-1. One, one just because it's fast. And uh, yeah, all you do is invite your three foods markets. Uh, we have had these for a while. Uh, when did we wish for these? Oh yeah, we wished for them right after we unlocked um, Chef. That was the main reason we wanted to unlock Chef. So you just wish for your uh, food markets and clear the level. Fast, easy, and you're going to get, um, so let's see, 80 plus, uh, so that's 260. 260 plus, how much did I say I had? Like 270? So that's like 530. So most likely one more time and we'll be done. Uh, one, one. Another thing about food markets, I can't remember if I, uh, if I said this earlier or not. The food that you get from food markets is random. Um, but in order to get the better random, um, in order to be able to get the better random foods, like the meat stew, uh, you have to have one or more uh, merchants at a decent level. Uh, I don't know exactly how the math works, but the level of merchants that you have is, is factored into it. And I think that you need to have either uh, one at like level 96 or multiple like totaling up to 96. Uh, and there we go. That's definitely enough food. All right, so now we're going to equip this food onto a couple of chefs. Um, and I like to, let's see. When I can afford it, 
I like to leave their uh, weapon slot open, and uh, we can manage that. So let's see, that's 240. Um, so like uh, another either 60 or 70 is what we need here. So what's easier? How about like a corn and a corn soup? That's Let's see, so... Uh, 120, 240, 300, 320. Oh, that's a... No, no, no. Okay, no, that's not too much. So, uh, 120, 240, 290, 310. There we go. So, the second is only going to need uh, 300. Let's grab that. Uh, meat stew and stuffed omelet. That's 200. Uh, omelet and veggie soup. That's 300. Okay. So, now we got enough food equipped. Uh, we're also... Oh, yeah. Uh, one other thing. I'm going to wish for... Uh, I don't... I don't think it... I think anybody... I'm not sure, but I think anybody can wish for this. Let's see. What I want is a warehouse, and I think this guy has enough leftover mana that I should be able to afford it. Let's see. Oh, no, no. God, that was dumb of me. Okay. Pretend that didn't happen. Uh, let me summon one of my... So it costs 17. Maybe I don't have enough mana. He's only got 13. I know what I'm going to do, though. Uh, where's Cat Kid? There he is. Cat Kid. There you go. Oh, neat. Bonus points. <laughs> I'll take it. And we're just going to have this cat kid kill one or two characters. I uh, wish I was a leader. And we'll equip them with some... Uh... Oh, yeah, this will be good. We'll equip them with that. Yeah. And, uh, let's see. Still zero. Uh, what about you? Yeah. Here we go. And now, uh, should have more than enough. Uh, let's see. Make a wish. Leader. Let's see. Oh, I'm gonna have to... No, not save. Take off the sword. And you're gonna wish for a warehouse. Now we got a warehouse, and we're gonna load it up uh, with our uh, two chefs, who we just equipped all that food to. They're gonna be bringing the food, and then the rest of it we're gonna just fill up with. Um, I like to use thieves because they have good move distance, they have good uh, throw distance. Is that all we got? Let's see. No, it's not. We got lots of thieves. So as long as we've got a total of eight, that's enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's enough. And then, um, let's see, for our remaining thieves, we want, let's see. Let me check this, range facilities, warehouse. Yeah, we could do that, okay. Um, so we also want to equip Let's see, unit equipment. Well, first, let's let's see status. So, okay. I guess it doesn't technically have to be thieves, but I want it. So, Jagan, Roberto, and Megas. Let's try to remember that. Where are they? Shuckle. No. There you are. Okay. So we have three bombs, I believe. Let's uh, let's take a look. This is how we're going to inflict gamble. Oh, we've got four now. I don't remember that happening, but that's good, I guess. Bomb. Bomb. And then we're kind of out of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, kind of out of, um, uh, that's right. We can, we can equip um, somebody else with one of them. Let's see. Arrange facilities. We'll equip... Uh, Tarkin. No, wait, we No, we got four slots left. That's perfect. Okay, so those three range facilities. 
sorry, I know this part's boring. Uh, there's a lot of this in Makai Kingdom. It's just getting your your uh, getting your ducks in a row before you do things like this is is very important. Uh, and then let's see, unit equipment. One of my other thieves, Crier. Cr oh yeah, <laughs> the one I just made. All right. Uh, where's my last bomb? Here you are. There you are. Okay. So he goes in there too. Why not? Happy accident. Warehouse. No. He should be like toward the bottom. Here you are. Okay. So these bottom four have got bombs. We got plenty to lift and throw, and we've got our food equipped. Uh, so I think that's all we. That's all we really need, isn't it? Um, yeah, so let's, uh, we'll definitely save first here. I'll even, uh, I'll even save in a different, uh, in case there's mishaps. And, uh, oh yeah, it would help if I, uh, let's see. Unit equipment. I'm going to be leveling, um, my professor. I'm pretty sure I've got one, right? Let's see. Status. Where is my... Okay, Sheila. Yeah, she's she's going to be the one I'm leveling. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain why afterward. Well, first, let me... Um... I've always wanted to check this. So the, the highest... Uh, the fairy list is the highest thing we have access to. Remember that. That's, that's going to be important. The highest book. Okay, so we're going to go to free dungeons. Here we go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is invite that warehouse right here. Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah, I can invite it close. That's fine. I'll invite it. Now, I'm, before I start trying to inflict gamble, I'm going to be checking their uh, status screen here. That's going to show me if they have any resistance to gamble status. Um, sometimes you get unlucky and uh, they will have some random equipment that gives them resistance to gamble. You want to avoid that. So check their status before you uh, single one out to pick on. Uh, it's also best to pick one that doesn't have uh, running shoes or like, um, there's one or two other things that can make it uh, in in inconvenient. But the big two things you want to look out for are gamble status or like a bonus to move coming from something like running shoes. Uh, This guy with his helmet doesn't, uh, that's probably going to be the one. So, um, yeah, to start with, just start inviting your bomb-wielding characters. And try to inflict gamble. And if we don't, uh, we got four tries here. If we don't get it, we'll just save scum. But four chances with a one in five chance, that's, that's not terrible odds. There we go, there's Gamble. Okay, uh, so now we're going to start um, lifting and throwing some of these enemies out of bounds. Yeah. Okay. okay, you see all that level up? That's... Um, that's going to be happening every time we do this. Drama. And again, I like using thieves for this because they got high move and high throw, and we've already got a bunch of them from uh, other stuff we've done. But you don't, you definitely don't have to use thieves for this. Other classes will work. Chefs will work. Anything will work. Just want to make sure you got enough. Uh, let's see, Legion. Is Legion the next one? Okay, just three more. Tarkin and Jaden. Yeah, we didn't have to. We wound up not having to use him. 
and I'm actually going to use one of my chefs here for the final one. Uh, now, the thing about this, uh, so, yeah, uh, this is why I like leaving the weapon slot open for chef, is because then you can also use them to uh, lift and throw. Um, but if you're planning on lifting and throwing and also feeding, uh, you are going to have to lift and throw first. If I were to start feeding this guy first, I would no longer be able to lift and throw. That's kind of a weird... Um, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure why that's the case, but um, you can lift and throw and then feed, but you can't feed and then lift and throw. So any uh, anytime you want to use a chef for both, definitely do the lifting and throwing first. And then this guy is going to get this food. So he's all fed. Only thing left to do is invite my professor. Let's see, invite, there you are. And she is going to need to be fed. Who's got the? Who's got, not Rao. Cutlass. Cutlass has the rest of the food. So we're going to take our first shot at this thing. It's going to be 50-50. We either get that killing blow or we miss. Uh, but take a look at this. This thing is level 2,322. And we've got our level uh, 35 professor here. Let's see what kind of levels. Uh, hopefully we get it on the first shot. If not, that's okay. Let's see what kind of levels we can get. Nope. All right. So uh, I'm fairly certain what's going to happen next is that... Um, this, uh, what do you call it? This enemy is going to destroy that facility. Uh, the AI uh, tends to be very aggressive toward vulnerable facilities. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, what I've done for safety is that I've, I, I had my, um, what do you call it? I had my professor here kind of climb up on the shoulders of my uh, chef uh, so that the, um, the enemy doesn't even have the choice of targeting her, because that would kind of ruin what we're going for here. So we got two more chances before this gamble status wears off. Uh, hopefully we hit it. Let's see what happens. If we have to save scum, we have to save scum. That's it. Oh, interesting. He didn't go for this facility. All right, so hopefully we get our 50-50 here. Come on. There we go. Okay. Uh, and it's as easy as that. Um... So let's take a look at a couple things. First, we want to look at how many levels she just gained. Uh, wait, there, okay, so she, she gained almost 400 levels. She went from level 35 to 432. Uh, so that just shows you how powerful uh, food dungeons are. Uh, I mean, if you're just playing through the normal, um, just playing through the chapters and not messing around with food dungeons, the enemies uh, toward the very end are, uh, I, th I think they're around level 100, maybe a little bit lower than that. We have absolutely left them in the dust with this character. Um, and now I'm going to show you why I uh, decided to level a professor of all things. Uh, so you'll recall that before we did this, the highest level book that we had access to was this, the fairy list. And now we have access to three more, Summoner, uh, Note of Death, and Book of Hermes. Um, I don't, again, I don't know exactly how the math works, but in order to get access to all of the items that, uh, that can be available from the shop, you have to get a professor up to a pretty high level. I seem to recall it was like 300 or something like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty high level. Uh, it's been a long time since I read it, and I don't remember the specifics, but if you just invest a food dungeon in it, uh, as you can see here, uh, you, you'll achieve it. So I kind of recommend doing that as either the first or one of the first things you do once you get access to food dungeons. Um, so yeah, uh, that's... In a nutshell, how you do food dungeons. Um, they're definitely 
very powerful. They're something you're going to probably be spending a lot of mana on. You're going to be using them a lot to level up. Um, definitely essential to know about them for the post game. Uh, lots of fun too. <laughs> like you're, yeah. The the first time you do it, just seeing your character's level just shoot up like that is just uh, feels amazing. Uh, but yeah, that is about it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps. Um, tune in again next time. We're going to be doing kind of like a, an experimental video because I had an idea and I want to try it out. So you're going to want to watch that too. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.